and we'll sing together hymn number 165, the first verse. The words are also printed in your bulletin if you prefer that. Our great God is making all things new. Jesus continued to speak from the high place, explaining to his listeners their place in the kingdom of heaven. He explained that he had not come to overturn the words of the prophets or their system of justice, but to fulfill it. And those who heard realized that they were in the presence of God. Let's sing once again. Let us pray. Loving God, we thirst for you in our lives. Come and add the color and flavor we need. Help us see your light around us and make us not only listeners, but also doers of your word. Hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's sing again. We'll have our first reader come forward for scripture. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand, and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. Five, uh, 17 through 20, Jesus and the law. Don't even begin to think that I have come to do away with the law and the prophets. I haven't come to do away with them, but to fulfill them. I say, that you, I say to you very seriously that as long as heaven and earth exist, neither the smallest letter nor even the smallest stroke of a pen will be erased from the law until everything there becomes a reality. Therefore, whoever ignores one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called the lowliest or the lowest in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps these commands and teaches people to keep them 
will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I say to you that unless your righteousness is greater than the righteousness of the legal experts and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Here's camp. Sorry about that. Here's camp. Here's the tent. Talk into it. You're good. Be sure to check your inhales this time. I don't want to be up all night. Hey, little man. Did you bring everything on the list this time? Um, what list? I have my cell phone, and I downloaded a really cool game. So where's our cabin? I need an outlet to charge my phone. Oh, and I brought an extra pair of flip-flops. Uh, I hate to tell you, but uh, we're not staying in the cabin. We're uh, out here in this tent, <laughs> and there's no electricity. Did you bring... Did you bring your hiking boots? Sorry. Also, did you, also, did you bring your sleeping bag? It's going to get cold tonight. Man, I can't believe my mom didn't pack that stuff. Your mom? She isn't the one who's supposed to pack for you. Don't you remember our motto? Be prepared. We're hungry. We're starving. Uh, hey, did you remember to bring, uh, or did you remember to get a new box of salt? Remember when we left the salt out in the rain in the last camp out and it got ruined? Yeah, I got some and we put it in a plastic bag this time. Uh, so it won't get wet. Remember that soup we had? Oh, man. Yeah, it was so gross. I'm glad you remember it. Um, it's getting dark, and I need to go to the bathroom. Where is it? It's, uh, it's over that way. Just uh, follow the path through the woods. Just but use your flashlight. Oh, no. Did you forget to bring a flashlight also? <laughs> There's a flashlight on my phone, but it doesn't put out much light, and my battery is getting low. Hey guys, our friend here needs help. Do, we, do you think we have some stuff for him? Oh, wow. Thanks, guys. You saved my life. Next time, read the list. 
God, you are always among us. Help us to understand what Jesus meant when he told us we were the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Amen. Well, when I met with the scouts to work on our plans for today, one of them commented that this text, this Bible text about salt and light, seems to be the same one we use every Scout Sunday. In fact, it's just a coincidence that Scout Sunday coincides often with the week when we talk about the Sermon on the Mount. But I have to admit, it can be a challenge to come up with a new angle on this scripture reading each time we we come to it. Well, my friends, my daughter has informed me that I have a problem. She pointed this out when I asked her to help me organize my spice cupboards. That's right, cupboards, not cupboard. There's a spice rack on the wall, and there are two cabinets that contain a wide variety of different flavoring agents. So she and I organized them into three categories sweet spices like cinnamon and nutmeg that are used usually for baking, savory spices like paprika and garlic powder that are used for meats and pasta dishes and soups, and then a whole section of spice blends. They get their own cupboard. Um, And she told me that I wasn't allowed to buy anything else until I ran out of what I already have Um, because I had multiple bottles of some of them. You know, you think you don't have any more and you go buy a new one, right? So I have looked around. I have not found a 12-step support group for Spiceaholics Anonymous yet. So I guess I'm on my own in, in working on this addiction. Well, in the time that Jesus lived, a wide variety of spices came through Israel from the Far East, from Egypt, and from all around the Mediterranean Sea. There are, in fact, 40 different Bible verses that mention various herbs and spices. There were balms or balsams, which are resin-like substances that come from tree sap. You've probably heard of myrrh. That was one of those. There were spices that we're familiar with, cinnamon, coriander seed, mustard seed, and cumin. And there were herbs like mint, parsley, and and a, a mixture of herbs they referred to as bitter herbs that are used during the Passover meal. And they had some roots like ginger and onions and garlic and horseradish. But for the poor people in Galilee, These herbs and spices were an extravagance, and salt was the main thing that they used for flavoring. Well, we know that salt brings out the flavors of other foods. I had a coworker, and some of you may do this, but I had a coworker who would sprinkle salt on melon, like cantaloupe and watermelon. I never really thought it needed a lot of extra sodium added myself, but that's how she liked it. It brings out the flavor. Salt water baths um, are used for a variety of skin conditions. So there is medical use for salt. um, And salt also can preserve things. In the world of medicine, I mentioned salt water baths. Um, Also, people can gargle with salt water to reduce pain and help with the healing of sore throats and other sores in the mouth. You can spray salt water into your nose and your sinuses to clean them out. Um, And people will pay a lot of money to sit in a salt cave. It's supposed to draw toxins and impurities from your body and improve breathing and reduce inflammation. Well, these days, you'll notice a whole aisle in most grocery stores devoted to salty snacks. We Americans love our mixture of fat and salt together. You can put anything in there and it'll taste pretty good. And in in the spice aisle, you can buy kosher salt, sea salt, French gray salt, pink Himalayan salt, iodized salt, or non-iodized. And you can get salt mixed with other things, like garlic salt and seasoned salt, or a family favorite, Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Salt. Have you ever had that one? It's pretty good. Well, Jesus said that people 
we're the salt of the earth. So what does that mean? And he said, if salt loses its flavor, its saltiness, then it's no good. Well, I have to confess that I once sat in a room of full-grown adults who debated for at least a half hour about how salt could lose its saltiness. They were just stuck on that one idea. How could it happen? Well, I suppose if it got wet and, and um, dried into one big chunk, it wouldn't be terribly useful. And I suppose if, it got, if the box that it was in got moldy and the flavor of the mold got into the salt, it wouldn't be so great anymore. Um, in fact, in my pantry the other day, I found a one pound box of salt, which I needed at the time, and discovered it had been hidden behind a box for so long that it was just a chunk. I tried banging on it, didn't do a thing. So it didn't get thrown on the ground, but it did get thrown in the trash. Well, we know that salt, being salt, is important. Um, and and um, salt isn't good. Once salt isn't good for anything, it's, it's really useless to us. Salt um, doesn't change chemically but you wouldn't necessarily want to use it if it was bad. Salt comes in a variety of levels of purity. Um, for example, this time of year, we spread road salt. But I wouldn't recommend eating it because it's mixed with all kinds of other junk. It's not pure. Um, but you can get salt to eat that's very pure. So when are we the salt of the earth? Well, we are the salt of the earth when we add flavor to our world. We're the salt when we make people thirsty to hear more. And we are salt when we work hard and live good lives. We are the salt of the earth. Not only are we salt, but we're also the light of the world. We can be a shining example, not because we're wanting to stand in a spotlight and have everyone look at us, but because we want them to observe our actions and praise God. We don't have to overthink or overexplain. We can just let people draw their own conclusions. You don't have to go up to somebody and say, well, you look very poor, so I'm going to give you some money now. That's not helpful. They don't need the words, but they may need the action. Or we could even ask them if they need help. Imagine. So as light, we shouldn't hide our light because it's needed in this dark world. You may remember that the Gospel of John begins by saying um, of Jesus, in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Well, these days we have the technology to light up the night almost like daytime. It just takes some strategically placed light bulbs and an energy source. But that hasn't always been true. In fact, we have the opposite problem of what they used to have. We have light pollution. We can hardly even see the stars at night because of the lights of our cities. When you see the Earth from space, the dark side of the Earth has the continents outlined by lights because so many big cities are on the coasts. So it's rare for us to be in total darkness. Have you noticed, though, that our imagination sometimes gets the best of us in the dark? We're frightened by moving shadows. We jump at noises. We worry that there's some unseen threat out there. We know for a fact that a lot of crime takes place under the cover of darkness. You'll notice most horror stories are not set in the daytime. A little bit of light can change how we feel. Researchers at MIT actually did this study and they found that we can see the light of a single candle from over a mile and a half away. A mile and a half in total darkness, the light of one candle can be seen. Well, the Bible tells us that God is light, that in heaven there's no need for any other source of light 
It's a different kind of light that's all enveloping and it causes no shadows. So the light we have here on earth is a dim version of what we will experience there. What does light do for us? Well, of course, it makes us feel safe and secure. We light up parking lots and roads and sidewalks and stairways. When there's light, we can see who and what is around us. Light shows us where we're going. We know that the scouts take flashlights with them to camp so they can see where they're walking in the dark. We have headlights on our cars to see the road ahead. And we use light to project images on screens and on computer monitors and televisions, even in movie theaters. Light allows us to see the whole spectrum of colors. Now it's interesting the difference between pigment and light. If you take all the colors of paint and mix them together, do you know what you get? Black. But if you take all the colors of light and mix them together, you get white. So all different light colors come together as white light. We know that because we can break them apart again with a prism and it creates a rainbow. So light is pretty important to us. That's why we light candles at the beginning of worship because we say that light represents the presence of God. And then at the end of the worship service, we put them out again, not because we believe God has left the building, but because it represents the end of this holy time together. Think about Christmas Eve, when we dim the lights of the church and we all light candles. It's a special moment when very many of us feel the presence of God. Light can be so tightly focused by a laser that it can cut things. And of course, it can be used for healing. And if nothing else, a good laser pointer makes a great way to entertain your cat. The final section of our reading today was about Jesus' approach to the law and the prophets. Now, first, you need to understand what he's talking about. The law, in this case, refers to the first five books of the Bible. The prophets refers to the 17 books of the Old Testament that are about prophets, five major prophets and 12 minor prophets. In a couple weeks, we'll look at the story of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And at that moment, Jesus is in a very bright light and next to him appear two people. One is Moses and one is Elijah. Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. So the law and the prophets are tied in to the ministry of Jesus. Um, Do you remember when Jesus asked John the Baptist to baptize him? He said it was to fulfill scripture. The Jewish people were expecting something very different than what they got. Their image of the hero or of of the Messiah was kind of like a superhero riding in on a white stallion to take the the country of Israel back from the Romans and restore it to its rightful place in the world as a world leader. Um, Instead, he came to show that everything in the ancient scrolls was true, and he spent his time reinforcing some of them and clarifying others. Now, he did criticize rules, But the rules he criticized were the hundreds of Jewish laws that were added over time and that made it almost impossible, according to them, to avoid God's wrath. He wanted people to come to know God as a close, loving parent figure. Now, Jesus did get angry a few times, and he was sarcastic a time or two, thank goodness. He poked fun at things that he found ridiculous, but he was always loving and always full of grace. He pointed out that the righteousness of the Pharisees, which we would probably call legalism, was not adequate to enter the kingdom of heaven. People needed changed hearts and changed lives to do that. 
So what can we take from this scripture today? Well, first of all, we, we right in this room are the salt of the earth, humble, hardworking people who are not in it for the recognition, but for the opportunity to do something for someone who needs to experience God's love. We are the light of the world. We don't need to be shy and hide what we have. We need to live in a way that brings attention and praise not to us, but to God who inspires us. And we need to strive to develop the kind of heart and mind that brings us into alignment with the kingdom of heaven. We can praise God for sending Jesus and praise the sacrifices of those who recorded his words and his actions. Those people started a small flame that has not only lasted for more than 2,000 years, but it has grown and spread across the whole planet. So let us be keepers of that flame and let us pass it on to everyone we meet. Amen. prayers for um, the Salashi family, Angel Angela and Michael, and their children, Matthew, Ava, and Luke, are just really having difficulty with the flu passing from one to another to another. At one point, I think they were all five sick, um, and it is influenza. They've been tested, and so it's a, a serious thing for the, for the family. We need to pray for them. Um, Angie called me yesterday to, to say to pass on to everybody her love, and she wishes she could be here, but she certainly doesn't want to pass this disease to anybody. Um, prayers for Mike and Renee. Mike Thompson has been moved to I get it, Bath Creek um, for rehab. He's, uh, the times I've, I've talked to him, he's been in a good mood and seems to be doing pretty well adjusting to things after his surgery. Um, let's see, prayers for um, the Haynes family. Beth Haynes lost her aunt, and the funeral service for her was yesterday also. Um, aunt Kathy, everybody I think who met her loved her dearly. <laughs> so prayers for the family. What other prayer requests do you have? I wondered about them. Okay. Henry Jaruszewski's aunt passed away. Her funeral was yesterday. I meant to call and ask if that, would, I figured it had to be a relative. <laughs> okay. Um, also yesterday, this is a prayer of thanks. We had Summit County Public Health um, sent a trainer here. Um, we had a small group of seven people who were trained in overdose prevention using naloxone, also called Narcan. And everybody who was there got a kit so that we're at least somewhat ready in the case that somebody would overdose. Um, but it was a good time. It, we had three people from Trinity and four people who attend recovery groups here who also came to get kits. Yes? Getting her. Oh, okay. For a friend named Mary who's having trouble getting her arthritis under control, that's terrible pain to deal with, of course. Who else? 
There are some prayer requests in your bulletin. Be sure to take a look at those. Any prayer requests, guys? Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Mike Thompson is also our liaison with the scouts, so the scouts have been sending him prayers and good thoughts as well. So this is a season of light, and and I mentioned earlier that God's kind of light doesn't create shadows. So what that means is that when God's light shines on you, there's no hiding and there's no need to hide because, of course, God loves us and is merciful. But it's hard to imagine being surrounded by a kind of light that shows everything. Um, So let's take a moment and take a deep breath in and breathe in the light of God, and breathe out all darkness. Breathe in light, and breathe out darkness. And let's pray silently for a moment. God, your holiness and righteousness would scare us to death if that's all we knew of you. But we also, because of Jesus, know you as Father and know that there is love and mercy that is much stronger than any anger you would feel for the wrong things that we do. So help us to understand that the kind of light you shine is not a painful light. It won't hurt our eyes, it won't hurt our hearts, it won't hurt us in any way. Let us welcome that light. As your people, God, we are experiencing among us many losses in this time of year. Many people who have been a major part of our lives, sometimes for our whole life, are no longer with us in person, but we know that they are with you. So let us not grieve like those who have no hope because we know there's more to the story than what we see here, much more, an eternity spent with you. Just as grass and wildflowers grow in the spring and summer but then die, we know that our lives have only a certain number of days. We thank you that we don't know the number of days. Sometimes that would be too frightening too. But we know that each of us is here for a season and each of us is here for a reason. To be a spokesperson for you, to spread your love, to do what you would want us to do. We are active as your people. We feed hungry people and we give clothing to those who don't have enough. We make sure that everyone has a warm place to sleep. And we're willing to sacrifice some of our own comfort to help other people. That says a lot, Lord, about the hearts of the people in this place, the hearts of your followers throughout the world. So continue to pour out your blessings upon us, continue to love us, and we will continue to do your work. Amen.
just will never waver. They will be remembered forever. They have no fear of evil news. With firm hearts they trust in the Lord. A light rises in the steadfast hearts they will not fear open handed they give to the poor their justice stands firm forever their heads will be raised in glory a light rises in the Let us pray. Holy God, accept these gifts we give you. They come from the love of our hearts and the generosity of our hands. Thank you for those who give of their time, who give of their talents, and who give of their treasures to the kingdom of God. Amen. Our closing hymn today is This Little Light of Mine, and many of you probably already know it. So let's have some fun with it. We have three verses in your bulletin that we will sing. Hear the good news. You are the salt of the earth, adding flavor to the world and creating a thirst to know God. You are the light of the world, so shine your light wherever you go. Amen.